Hello, and welcome along to the stream tonight. I hope that uh, anyone out there is uh, doing well and living COVID-free as per normal. So in terms of me, uh, I had a couple of weeks away from streaming. Um, so this last week, I've been away uh, on a family holiday. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, got an opportunity to recharge, uh, getting ready for uh, coming back to work, I guess. So today was first day back. Uh, hello, Nils in the chat room. Uh, good to have you along. Um, so yeah, there was great time had. Uh, we had a really, really good family break. Uh, got some downtime. Uh, literally was completely off the grid. Um, my MacBook Pro, that is my kind of solitary development machine. Uh, it ha actually had to go into the shop for um, repair. So I was without a computer for an entire week. And I think since I kind of started my career, I've never been in that situation before. So it was an interesting week with literally no laptop. Uh, I've since got it back and it's working, so that's good. Uh, hello, Patrick. Uh, hello, Augusto uh, in the chat. Good to have you along. Um, so I mentioned that I kind of wanted to do something a little bit different, um, and it kind of stems from the holiday that we just had. So if I got it here, yeah. So one of the things that we did in holiday uh, was we visited a couple of castles in Scotland. Now, according to this map that we picked up, there are 735 castles in various stages of disrepair and ruin in, in Scotland. Uh, and as a family, we've, we're have we not going to do all of them because that would just be ridiculous. Um, but while we were away, we literally did, we visited a castle a day and we have selfies of visits and various photos of the the visiting these castles so what i want to do is and, and it's kind of because my eldest child showed a little bit of an interest in it is i want to create a little website that we can upload some photos to of the castles that we visited and then also capture some information about the visit um when we were there what castle we were at uh, maybe a marker on a Google map so that we know where it was, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a little pet project, a little web, a little easy website. Um, and I went looking, uh, but I should, before I remember, I should say thank you, Matthias, for the subscription. Thank you very much. That's a 27-month streak, Matthias. Thank you very much. And I'm hoping that he's in the chat room because I might have to pick his brain about certain things. So I went looking, and what I found was that uh, Mads Christensen, as some of you may know, has got a template that does a lot of the work that I want to do. So before the stream, what I did, so I thought about it. I, so I did, but I kind of wanted to, I wanted to play with a few things because like I say, I've not done certain, so a static website maybe, uh, but I did like the ability of being able to administer it uh, on the fly. Um, so I went looking and I found that Mads has created a uh, template that you can uh, create. So I installed the template and I've run it. And what you get out of the box is a simple project. Now, obviously, there are warnings here. You can't see because of my head. But there are warnings because of the supported.NET Core app 2.0. It's out of support, etc. Uh, but what you do get is a very basic uh, website that allows you on the fly to create uh, an album, to uh, edit the name of that album, and then to upload photos into that album. It has things like uh, image optimization, thumbnail generation, etc., built in. Um, so what I thought I would do is I would take this template and I would um, make it fit for what I want to do. But before I got to the point of um, doing the modifications to it, what I want to be able to do, and this is the part that I know conceptually what I want to do, but I don't know how to do it because I've never done it, 
is I want to take this new uh, repository that I've created. So the GLA trips is obviously my name and then the names of my wife and my children. So GLA trips, I thought that kind of worked out quite nicely. Um, I want to take this and I want to publish it to Azure and host it on as a website in Azure. And then as I make commits into this repository, I obviously want to run the build, publish it, and then update the, the live site. So conceptually, I know exactly what I want to do. However, a couple of things that um, I'm not concerned about, but um, the way that the website works out of the box is that it will create, um, so maybe if we just, uh, so it creates files on disk um, and it then um, just puts them into the, um, the root of the website. Now there are, um, it does have the ability to support, there's a CDN tag helper that it can use, which I'm assuming means that you can configure it to point to having the images stored elsewhere. But out of the box, what it does is it just puts them on disk. So my first concern in the, the this running version of the website is that if I republish to the same Azure resources, will it blow away the files that it's written to disk? So that's kind of where my uh, request for Mr. Azure MVP um, would uh, come on board and tell me how to do this. So Matthias is saying, so .NET publish, zip and publish, file on disk isn't good, should use, so so again, so understood, understand it's not a good idea, uh, we'd want to put them somewhere else, and I think it has that baked in, but what I want to do is just get, I want to get the site up and running, and then I want to be able to have the pipeline in place so that as I'm making changes, it's pushing it out and, it's, and I can test it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to put the pipeline in place first. So based on what you've said, you're saying .NET publish, zip and publish, uh, which is where I want to go. So based on that then, I should be able to create a pipeline. Now I thought about creating, the, I, I went to Azure DevOps to start with, uh, now obviously that might be a GitHub action as well at some point, but I thought I'll start with a pipeline in Azure DevOps and see where we get to. So this is it, I'm, I'm gonna try and create the, I'm, I wanna take this website and I wanna push it to Azure and I wanna have a go, go gadget, right? That's where we wanna start. So I'm gonna create my pipeline and then if I'm doing something that's wrong, please feel free to tell me. Um, but where is your code? So my code is in uh, GitHub. I'm gonna click on that. And then it's gonna say select a repository. Mm, well, that's obviously, why can't I, mm, okay. Okay, wasn't expecting that to appear. Okay, but I want that one. Validating permissions. I'm going to say selected repositories to that one. Read access to metadata. Okay, approve and install. I'm going to say that one. Sure. Taking me back to Azure DevOps organization. Configuring my pipeline. So ASP.NET Core build and test ASP.NET Core projects targeting .NET Core. ASP.NET Core .NET framework. So it is this one. Start with a minimal pipeline, you can build your deploy. Existing Azure Pipeline YAML, select an Azure Pipeline YAML. Okay, no, we're gonna go with this then. Hey Maurice, how's it going? Oh, don't need to apologize. So, ASP on the core, build and test. So, trigger uh, is on the master branch, which is what we want. That's maybe a little bit small. Let's maybe see if we can make it a little bit bigger. Um, VM image Ubuntu latest, sure. Uh, build configuration release. And this could do a .NET build, configuration, build configuration, and then display name. So, okay, so let's start there. Uh, commit directly to the master branch, sure. So let's see if the .NET build works. And if it does, we can extend the pipeline to do a .NET publish, he says.
that didn't go well. <laughs> no hosted parallelism has been purchased or granted to request a free. What does that mean? Um, I have not, Maurice. Um, I haven't really been in Slack since I started setting things up for the stream tonight. Uh, so what happened there? <laughs> this one. No hosted parallelism, parallelism has been purchased or granted. The request a free... Why would I want to do that? So um, it's not that... So so my problem... So the, so the, the question that uh, Patrick has asked is um, uh, why not using Cake? Um, so the problem with that is I currently don't know what I need to do. So my thought process was at the minute, I just want to figure out how to do what I want to do, get it working, and then add the cake build. Because um, as we both know, uh, cake doesn't do magic. Uh, I need to be able to tell the, the cake build um, what I want to do. And at the minute, I don't know what I want to do. Um, so I thought I'll start in, uh, uh, the, uh, start in YAML. Uh, use any built-in tasks that I can make use of, figure out what needs to be done, and then switch over to our cake build. That's my process. Um, new orgs aren't free anymore, so that could be that. Okay, well, how do I, what do I need to do? To request free parallelization, fill in the following form. Uh, okay. Sure. Uh, what is your name, Gary Park? What is your email address? It's freely available on GitHub, so I'll just type it in. What is the name of your Azure DevOps organization? Uh, well, that was Gary Park. Um, okay. Are you requesting a parallelism increase for public or private projects? Public. Please provide a list to the public repositories we plan to build. Okay. Copy. Paste. We will grant public uh, project concurrency only to validated. Otherwise, you should start with private project. Provide, provide an explanation of your project and a justification for why you need. What now? We will grant public project concurrency only to validated open source projects. Otherwise, you should start with a private project concurrency. Provide an explanation of your project and a justification for why you need public concurrency. I don't understand what that means. What? I, I've read that three times now and I don't understand what that's saying. What, what what am I putting in here? <laughs> Please explain why you don't do crypto mining. I think that is essentially what it means, yes. But still, we will grant... So is it saying that I should make it private? What happens if I make it private? Okay, fine. Should I make it private because then I don't have to do that? Sure. But then I'll need to go back and delete this. How do I delete this then? Project settings. I didn't even know there was a new policy. So I'll, I'll let's delete this project then. And I'll make it a private one. And no thinking, just cake. Um, sure. Um, but... <laughs> Uh, what's that saying? This is kind of into a brave new world that um, they change policies for breakfast. Okay, so we've now got a private repository. Fine. So if, now if we go to pipelines and say create pipeline, then we'll go to GitHub. Then I'll type in this. There we go. You selected a public repository, but this is not a 
public court. Let's see. That, I, I, hi, Phil. Um, I, I didn't see that part about the two to three day lead, lead time, I'll be honest. I just wanted to build it. Um, I wasn't expecting this to be like this. You selected a public repository, but this is not a public project. Go to project settings and change the visibility. I really just want to build it. I don't remember this being this hard. Let me try that again then. So GitHub. So it might be at this point. Um, I just sort of thought that it would be easier to do it in Azure DevOps, but it's looking like it's not going to be the case. Um, I'm assuming that this is going to fail again. And if it does, then yeah, we'll just go to, okay, fine. Let's do GitHub Actions then. Um, and uh, Matthias is saying that um, they change because of crypto miners. Okay, and, uh, and, and I understand that, I do, I do. Uh, Nils, uh, it wasn't hard before, it is now since Sprint 184. I should go and read that. So if anyone wants to, so Nils has put a link in the chat room uh, as to what's changed here. So let's let's do get let's do GitHub Actions then. So, uh, Mateus pointed out um, here's an example pipeline that we can use. So I'm going to go to that YAML file, which looks like it is an Azure DevOps YAML file. So based on what we've just decided, we might need to tinker with this to uh, make it build on GitHub Actions, but that's fine. So this is, so just looking through this, it's essentially what uh, Matthias was saying. It's a .NET publish of the project. It's then a task to archive it and then publish pipeline artifact to Publish it to staging directory. Okay, fine. Um, it essentially only reads no crypto miners beyond this point. I'm crypto hasn't bought anything good to the world, brought anything good to the world. Seriously, uh, no, agreed, agreed. Um, okay, so let's do this slightly differently then. So let's we're going to create a GitHub action then. So let's I'm going to suggest that we go back to here. And I do a git fetch um, origin. Uh, and Matthias is saying then have a separate release, uh, but there's probably already a template for GitHub Actions. Uh, so git uh, rebase master. Okay, so GitHub Actions. We are going to build and test a .NET or ASP.NET Core project. That's, oh no, hold on. Deploy your code with these popular services. So deploy node, deploy, build and deploy. There's gonna be one, there has to be. But let's start with this one. So, uh, yeah, let's reboot the latest actions, check out, uh, restore the dependencies and build. So let's start with this one. And then there's some built-in actions that we can play with. So let's do this and then, sure. Let's see how we got on with this then. And then Matthias has just sent me something else. Deploy to app service using GitHub Actions. That sounds perfect. So we will need um, 
Maurice just shared something. So it's working again. That's good. Uh, am I allowed to share my latest? Sure. I have no objections to you sharing your uh, latest pet project, Maurice. Go for it. So we're in the build, we're doing the build, and we're running the test. There probably, there probably wasn't any tests yet. And then post run, checkout, job complete. Okay, so that build completed. Uh, the only good thing about crypto might be better GPU cards that are now almost unavailable due to crypto. Um, and then that was the link I clicked on, I think. Uh, been trying to get my hands on a 3080 for a while now. Impossible because someone needs them to melt ice caps. Yes, indeed. Okay, so. Looking at this. We need to do, so I'm looking at the link that Matthias sent in the chat room and what he's showing is that in my .NET YAML file, in addition to the build, there is the so run .NET restore, run .NET build, which is the same as this. I guess let's make this the same. Can I search here for Azure App Service? What does it come up with? App Service Web App Action Azure App Service Publish Profile. But let's, there are some there, but let's stick with the documentation. So we're going to modify this slightly. So let's do a wee copy of this. And we'll change this to this. Uh, where did I copy that from? I copied that from there. So we're doing a restore, we're doing a build, configuration is released, and we're doing a publish to the Azure Web App Package Path. Now we don't have that yet. So oh, hold on. What does that mean? Yep, so that's what I was, that's what I'm reading, I think. Build the web app, deploy to app service. Oh, there's a final part. So the publishing profile. Okay, so hold on. Build and deploy a .NET core app to Azure using Azure Publish Profile. The Publish Profile input references the Azure App Publish Profile secret that you created earlier. So we will need to create, okay. So, so some of these things I'm gonna to have to do offline because well, it involves secrets. But let's, so the link that I'm following is, let's close some of these down. The link that I'm following is this one. Okay, so what Matthias is suggesting there is, if possible, I would recommend going service principle, but publishing profile will work fine. So there's, if I scroll down here, there are two options. One is a published profile, and the other is you can create a service principle with the AZAD create for RBAC command in the Azure CLI. 
run this command in Azure Cloud Shell in the portal or by selecting the Try It button. Okay. So, okay. So let's, I'm going to, I'm off screen to try some of this stuff because I don't know what um, it involves. So I'm going to click, I'm clicking the try it button and it's asking me to sign into my Azure account and I'm signing in and I am, it's, it's waiting. Choose one of these directories. Choose one of your Azure accounts. It's not giving me. It's not giving me the one I would expect to have in there. It's giving me two, one of which is one of yours, Matthias. Um, but it's not giving me what I would have. have it's not giving me what I would have expected to see in there. So here's my first problem. How do I? How do I fix that? Um, because yeah, it's not giving me my one. It's only giving me these two. I'm not even sure if I'm meant to be showing that part. To be honest, <laughs> um, how do I get it to show me my own directory? No, it's only giving me the, the, the screen that's popped up. Maybe if I can make this smaller and bring this in here, then The only options I've got are there is no show all button. It's it's no. Try it again. I'm gonna click try it, and then it's giving me two here, but it's not giving me. No, I don't understand for why. Shouldn't be this hard. <laughs> I really just wanted to deploy it. Oh, I wasn't expecting it to be like this. But I think it comes down to fun. Yeah, that's where I was. So portal.azure.com, and it's showing me these two things here. And I, I mean, I can see those two things. Unless I haven't got something set up that I need to have set up. But I would have thought, do I need to, do I need to create a directory? So you have no other subscription on that account. So what does that mean? Learn something new today. Descriptions. Sign out, sign in. Oh. I'm not under. I'm not sure. I understand. <laughs> Just reading about uh, So, are 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 you suggesting that my who I'm currently logged in as is not who I think it is? I'm logged in with my Microsoft account.
Well, I mean, the account I'm logged in with is what I thought was my uh, MSDN Visual Studio subscription. So I haven't needed to provide my credit card details. Um, but it seems like that's not what I've got. So I definitely do have that, yes. So Mateus is suggesting that it could be that you've got both MS and an AAD account, and I definitely do. But my question then is, well, which one should I be using? Because I've never really fully understood why I got a um, why I got a but that's what I'm logged in with. So the one I'm currently logged in is with my Microsoft account, not my uh, Azure Active Directory one. Because I even struggled to get logged into the AAD one. Because now it's asking me to update my password. No, current password is that. Bad idea. I'm trying to get logged into the um, Okay, so what I want is to be logged in as my Microsoft account and I want for my directory to be called not you, Matthias. So what do I need to do to change that? Because yeah, that's what I would like, if that makes sense. Because I thought that the Visual Studio subscription that is in there is mine, not yours. Or am, am I mistaken in that regard? This is fun, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to wait for a response on that one. It depends. <laughs> what does that mean? It depends where you've renamed, redeemed your sub. I've just granted you access. You've just granted me access to what? I mean, I thought I had redeemed my sub under my Microsoft account. Because if I were to go to um, here and go, I'm now signing into my MVP site. And if I go here and go to Programmation. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, there's a button that you push uh, to enable the, the benefits, isn't there? I just read what uh, I just read what Kim wrote there. Yeah, where's the, where's the whole? And see what I'm looking for.
I thought there was a button within the MVP site for activating the Hold on. Why can't why you can't see your own, I don't know. I've been having a stream in the background. The only thing I can hear is don't use Azure. Now nowadays with Azure you'll just use AAD. We're in trouble because we're old. Okay, so the AAD is the default. So what you're saying is that I can't create I can't create, or I couldn't log into Azure with my Microsoft account now. It would want me to go down the path of an Azure Active Directory. Okay, fine. So then what I would want to do then is let's go into here and say uh, open vault. And then let's see, I'll be searching here for this. And then let's do a research in here for a uh, I want to I want to go up here and I want to generate a new password that is here. Here I'm going to put that in there. This in here and this in here. I'm going to say sign in. Okay, fine. Okay, so when I'm signed in to my AAD version of portal.azure.com, it's saying that I don't have a subscription. So then it becomes the question of how would I add the subscription that I thought was my subscription into this one rather than into the Microsoft one. Because what I'm not sure on is whether in this one over here, the credits that are available on this one, I don't know if they're my credits or whether they're Mateus's credits. Is there anything better to use? AWS always feels like it's much more pain than Azure. Never tried the Google. I haven't tried the Google uh, Cloud Compute either. Um, uh, Cloud Platform, sorry, Google Cloud Platform. Um, so yeah, how would I know whether the subscription that is in this account is mine or whether it actually belongs to Matthias? How would I find that out? Who is the sub admin? How would I find that out? I'm looking. It says under my role is account admin. <laughs> access control check access just I want to know who owns it I've been using AWS for a few years for something simple as this app. I think it's easier to set up. If you're the admin, then it's probably okay. So, if that okay, so 
let's work on the assumption that I am the admin. Why have I not got a directory? Why is the default directory yours? Because I want my own one. How do I create a new directory? Would I create a new Azure Active Directory? Just create one, he says. It's so simple. Just create one. Azure Active Directory. Name, default directory, tenant ID. Oh no, that's there. So if I click add, no. Only one directory per sub. So they'll say, I can't do that. Pseudo. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so, so very confused. Skip it for now. Just use the sub. Can create it later. Okay, fine. We, I think we need to, I think we need to have a conversation offline, Matthias, to fi to figure out what's going on, because we're forty four minutes in and we haven't actually done, <laughs> we haven't actually done anything yet. Right, where did we get to? We got to, um, I lost where we were. We were. I was trying to create a service principle, wasn't I? And Matthias is saying, if you just create a web and use the publishing profile. Okay, fine. Let's, let's start there. Right. Back to the beginning. We are going to Use the Deployment Center. You can quickly get started with GitHub Actions by using the App Service Deployment Center. That sounds great. This will automatically generate a workflow file based on your application stack and commit it to your GitHub repository in the correct directory. That sounds great as well. So to allow that to happen then, let's leave this and let's delete this file. Sure, right. Navigate to your web app in the portal. I don't have one yet. So let's start there. Let's go here. Let's go to my dashboard. And I'm going to click on home and I'm going to create a new resource. And we're going to create a web app. Under that subscription, sure. Resource group, uh, create a new one and we'll call it uh, trips web app name i'm going to be imaginative and i'm going to call it la trips um publish is going to be code runtime stack is going to be currently the currently the website is asp.net core 2.0 So I'm going to click that. Um, best practice is to give your, so let's do, okay, RG dash, sure. I'm okay with that. So 2.1, I'm going to say that I'm going to put this in the UK somewhere. So this is going to be UK, one's in Ireland, one's down south. Let's go for Ireland. Um, Windows plan, app service plan, sure, standard. Let's review and create.
So estimated price loading. I want to see what the estimated price is. £68 per month. What was that? Create plant what? Doesn't need the S1. Oh, I see. Okay. Basics. Change size. Go back. So what does it need then? What would your suggestion be? Create new first name. What? Give it. Oh, I see. This one? Create new. So your suggestion would be plan flat trips or is that what you're referring to same name as site so gla trips okay fine and then change size dev test standard infrastructure 60 minutes free Fine. Apply. And I think what ASP yeah, trips, let's do that. Fine. Review and create. Estimated pricing. Why is that still got a skew in it? I thought I changed that. I, I clicked on the change button. Or did I? No, I never. Right, next. <laughs> we'll get there. I'm sure we'll get there. So we've got a resource group. We've got... .NET Core 2.0, we've got a plan, it's free, enabled. Let's do it. Right, I've got a group now. I've got a I've got a web app. What? I'm creating now. It didn't tell me to do that on the instructions. So that's why I didn't do anything else. Deployment is in progress. Would love to hear your feedback. I'm not sure if you would, to be fair. I don't know if you would. So we'll wait for this to go. And then it's going to try and tell me. And Phil's uh, including a good resource for... Um, Naming your uh, resources in Azure. That could be an interesting one to have a look at. That looks really interesting, actually. If those are accreditations, then sure, let's do it. Right. So it says, navigate to the web app. We're here. And then it says in deployment center under continuous integration, select GitHub. That's exactly what we want to do. Then in here, I'm obviously going to need to authorize Azure App Service. There's a lot of stuff. Sure. So then in here, I want to have my one. And then in here, we're going to have the GLA Do 
seriously? Where did you go? I've got a few repositories. And I don't think it likes it. Can I just type it in? I'm going to wing it. Nope. Seriously? What, why can't I see it? Sorry. I just, I just want to try again, GitHub, select an organization that would be myself. And then in here, Assuming that these are in alphabetical order. Then where is where, where, where's where's <clears throat> I'm wait to lose the plot. I'm gonna try it on a bigger screen in the hope that there's a bigger drop down list. Deployment center. GitHub. Yep. That, that this box doesn't seem to be wanting to work. <laughs> the repository that I know is there isn't coming up. I don't I I don't get it. I really don't. See this. Do you have to select it? I've, I've been trying that, Phil. I've, if I type it in, so GLA trips, I'm going to tab out of it. I hit tab and it disappears. I, I, so that works fine. So those are all chocolatey repositories. But when I go to my one, then it sits and spins for a bit. 
And then I have got a lot of repositories under my account. But yeah, I tried that too, uh, uh, Kim. Gla trips. And then it disappears. <laughs> I just, I just want it filled. This was meant to be the easy bit, and I was going to get to the hard stuff. No, no, I didn't. So, claw trips. Typed it in, and I'm going to hit the drop down list. So it's then selected the text, and then it's giving me the same list. And it's not there. It's not in the list. And I don't know for why. And I'm assuming if I just click on something else. And... No, Maurice, I shouldn't need to do that at all. That's, that's, no. Why, why, why should I need to do that? That's a ridiculous thing to say. I shouldn't need to do that at all. I'm upset now. No, I tried that too, I think, Maurice. G L A A trips. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Uh, discard. Yes, uh, Matthias, you missed this thing not working. I'm trying to select the repository that I've created, but it won't let me because it's not in the list. The list is there, but it doesn't have, it doesn't go down to G and I don't know for why. But yes, yeah, so uh, Kim is absolutely correct. I would consider that a workaround. Uh, but I, I've tried that too. But it's not letting me. The, the, the page comes up and then disappears. And now it's saying authorizing user. Ah, just... I try again. GitHub. Click. I'm going to click change account. It opens and it closes, but it doesn't give me the option to reauthorize. <laughs> I'm open to suggestions, folks. What do I need to do to make it so that that window doesn't disappear? Because it's getting ever so slightly frustrating.
I'm going to sign out of GitHub. No, oh, now you see. All right, I'm going to put this down here. Yeah, so I got to that point as well, Matthias. But thank you. GitHub. Copy the password. Paste it in. GitHub. Reauthorize it with. So I've just logged out and logged back in again. And it didn't ask me to reauthorize. But let's go back to here and select repository. Still not got it in it. Still don't find it. Is there an Azure GitHub app? I don't know. Let's find out. I'm logging into that GitHub over here. Settings. Applications. There is a Azure App Service, yes. But looking at So the Azure App Service application, which is an authorized OAuth app, has access to, well, it has access to my account and it has access to a couple of um, organizations, but it, it has access to, yeah, it has access to everything that I think it should need. It, it doesn't explicitly have an access to a repository, but it does have access to organizations, one of which is my own. So I haven't explicitly granted it the ones that you're seeing here, but these ones are, are there, but the newest one isn't. That was that one, so this one can get deleted. I can uninstall that one. Okay, yes. So let's do this then. Let's click on here. And can I remove? Well, let's do this. Let's, let's just revoke the access. And we'll try again. Right. I'm wondering if that is the case, Phil, yeah. 
But if it, surely I'm not the only person that has a hundred over a hundred repos. Surely, because no. Feature. Right, I'm going to do what um, I'm going to do what uh, Maurice suggested, and I'm going to move the repository over to a different org. Now, obviously, that won't come up. So I swear. I swear that this is <laughs> authorize. Right. Right, fine. So let's put this over here. Settings. Transfer. <laughs> Can I phone you tomorrow about the the um the the directory issue? I, actually, tomorrow might not be a good, day, but I'll I'll let you know if I'm available and if you're available, because it would be good to understand what's going on there. Uh, no. Right. Thank you for your help, Matthias. Uh, trips. Okay, it's there. So now, under here, obviously, it might not have found it yet. But if we go into here and say here right there it is select a branch master fine dot net core 2.1 right so what do we need to do next select github actions use the drop down list to select your repository i did that eventually if the selected branch is protected on the final screen you can review your selections so preview that looks amazing And I want to click. Okay, so the instructions are not. So I'm going to hit save. Setting up a GitHub action. Successfully set up a GitHub action build and deployment pipeline. So what's that done? If I go over here and I look at here. Well, trips. Okay. So in here. It has done all of this stuff, yada, yada, yada. And then it's put it into there. And then it's also put it into secrets published profile. All that for a secret and a pipeline. Yes, indeed. So if I go in here and I look at secrets, then Interesting. Okay, so it's put everything into there. Happy days. Workflow, yes. So if I go into here and I do actions then, oh, it's, it's running it. Okay, fine. So if all of this works, it should do a build and then a deploy. What do we think? I've forgotten the name of the bloody uh, overview. So where should this be accessible? It should be accessible here. So I'm assuming that there's, going to, there's not going to be anything there yet. A hey, app service developer, your app service is up and running. Type, so we need to deploy our code. Fine. So that's what's happening in here. So it's running a .NET publish. It is 
uploading the artifact for the deployment job. That sounds good. And then it's running post checkout. Now it's running the, the deploy. So far, so good. Found online and idle host runner in the current repositories organization account that matches. That looked good. Downloading artifact from build job. Happy days. And it is deploying to Azure web app. Package deployment using zip deploy initiated. So my assumption of what's happened is that the because I haven't read the, the workflow properly, is that it ran the .NET publish, it zipped all of that up into a zip file, and then that zip file is being deployed onto the app service, and it should have been deployed. So if we come back over here and we do this then, wait for it, wait for it, Eight. It's making me think about it. still thinking or it's taking longer to fail what do we think HTTP 500 error. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, then. How do we find out what the 500 error is on that site? I did, Phil. Yes, I did. So this is the site. And if I click the button, if I click the button running on localhost, then let's just prove to Phil that it's working first. It's a, sanity, it's a good sanity check, Phil. It's here. It says my photo gallery. So it's running locally. All happy days. So if we go back over here and we look at application insights, then your application is connected to the insights resource. Logs. Welcome to Log Analytics. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. Um, hold on. So there's no SQL Server involved, no. Which, Mike, you, you, um, Nils, you're suggesting HTTPS. What, what, where did you see that? Or what did I miss?
I just want to see. I just want to see the the log. Failures tab on the left. Failures tab on the left. I don't see. Oh, failures. Look at that. So at this point, the CI did work. Um, it's been deployed, but we're getting a 500 error. So what I'm trying to figure out now is what that error is. Let's just try accessing it again and see if we get the same one. Seventy nine minutes in, and we've got a five hundred error. I think HTTPS is the default for Azure and HSTS is the default for most .NET setups. I think an error in the HTTPS setup results in a 500 error. Did you check exceptions in the logs? I couldn't, so unless I'm missing something, um, oh, exceptions here. What do I need to do to... What do I need to do to put exceptions into this thing? I think part of the problem is I don't know how to use this. Um... There are some predefined oh, what's this? Fine. So we're back on the application insights, insight data. And you're suggesting that potentially I click on logs. And type your query. Uh, 
eight exception and click run. Okay, top level expressions must return tabular results. No quotes. Okay, sorry. No results. <laughs> Requests. None. Faces. None. Is it like a star? No. I I I I I'll, I don't know, Phil. To be honest, I was going by what Nils said, where it was just activated. So no. So okay. So no then. Um. <laughs> so no then. Breathe. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. So if we were, if we wanted to do this, <laughs> so how does one enable application insights on a website? Next question. Is there just a NuGet package for that? And if so, how does one do it? Application insights. Can I just install that? And if I do, what does that do? And would I need the ASP.NET Core version of it? Kim just sent a message here. Application insights for ASP.NET Core applications. Prerequisites enable application insight server side telemetry. Open your project in Visual Studio. Okay, and then select project. Add application insights telemetry. That sounds great. Configure dependency, select a service dependency to add to your application. Monitor web application performance and uses without connecting to an instance. With connection. So we want to connect to an instance. And then. That's not the account that I want to use. The one I want to use is this one. Re enter your credentials. I may come off the page here a little bit to do this. And we will say that it is that password. See. It's been a while since I've, I've never done this side of, I've never done this side of things, um, uh, Nils. Oh, here we go.
Okay. So I'm getting signed in on here, hopefully. Mm. Where is it? Here. Uh -huh. oh. That's part of it. That's part of it, uh, Kim. Absolutely. So this one. This one. Okay, so I'm enabling this, he says. Save the connection string value in Where should I local user secrets? How how is that going? To, oh, so I would need to copy this and put it into as a secret on the I'm going to Copy that, maybe. Project changes for dependencies code. Sounds good. But part of it is that um, almost all of my website development experience has all been on an IIS. It's been a locally hosted IIS server. It's never been um, it's never been published to somewhere like this. What has this done? This has added application insights. It has added some stuff. And then it has enabled application insights with configuration app sites. Check the, oh well. I'm not seeing an actual secrets.json file. Or has it put one into? So all of these changes here are safe to go in though, right? Because this is just adding application insights. It is uh, insights arm.json. Don't really know what that is. There's the local secrets file with the connection string ID. It's possible. I mean, I think ultimately I'm going to blow this thing away. I'm not too concerned. I don't think, even if I did, I don't think it's got all of it. And what well, if it was this one? I mean, that's uh, that's that's a default thing that, and it hasn't got all. I think we're fine. I think we're fine. Let's just say, add application insights. Let's commit that. 
and let's get push origin. Now, obviously, that's going to be the if I'm, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, though, Kim, I think what it's doing is it is putting the connection string I think the way it's been configured I think the way it's been configured is that it will look for um the Ooh, there's a force SSL. Interesting. Yeah, uh, and Phil's pointing out that the remote's changed, so I need to do that too. Um, so let's leave that the way it was. Isn't it? Um, so Back to here, get remote minus B, get remote set URL. Get remote set URL origin to be not this, but to be this get push origin that will let me do it most likely because of changes that were made but we should be able to do get rebase origin on master get push origin and then what i think we need to do is i need to then take the We then need to take the string that it created and add it as a secret into GitHub, I think. So let me come off the screen a little bit to then have a little look. Why why would that need to be Azure Nils? I'm confused. That's easily done, I know. Because the running Web app. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, so you're saying that potentially that's already been done then. Um, is that right? Maybe. So if this builds and publishes, then it might just it might just start working home application here application insights there's a configuration section
Voy a decir que esto se haga gente afrana. Oh, where? There. Where? App service configuration. This one. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's added those. So the process that I went through has added those. Maybe. Because those were the application insight connections. So that's the thing that it was going to use. Maybe. Love it. Okay. So add application insights is there. Let's try refreshing both of these pages. And I've got about 21 minutes left to then see if we get any additional information from application insights about any problems. Logs. Still loading. This has been a fun little foray into not doing <laughs> So that timed out with a 500, or didn't time out, but it. How to see logs for Azure App Service HTTP 500. <laughs> what does this say? Sure. This will another area to look is Kudu. Kudu, go to advanced tools in the portal. Advanced tools. Where does one find the advanced tools? Advanced tools. In your app service. That's where I am. So I'm in my app service, Bill. So I search here. Oh, advanced tools. Okay, advanced tools. Okay. Debug console. No, tools. that you can browse the content of your site and look under the logs folder app settings deployment files nope go to the debug console Oh, look at that. I thought I was just going to get a PowerShell. Hmm. 
Oh, hold on. Where do I see a timestamp? 2039. Listening on port something or other. Doing that something different. A bunch of stuff there. Let's do it. Started process. Three, three. Oh, hold on. Saw this earlier, but I also didn't want to. Oh, look at that. I'm getting a 404 page. Uh, so the short answer is, I, I genuinely, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, But let's do a little bit of a so this is the site that's the www root so in here it won't it shouldn't parse that one out what is there that i could browse to It's all assembly. Is it just that the unless it's pre-compiling the views, there's an image is this thing here? Copy. Unless the views are pre-compiled. It's not there. I would have expected that to be returned.
I don't understand. I don't think. Hmm. Oh, that's just the, the my app is just where it is uploading the artifact to. That's not going to be where it's actually sent to. Let's try this. What happens if I do? If I run this locally, what happened? Copy. Don't let build. Lots of warning about being out of support, that's fine. And if I take this, copy that, paste it into here, say, C, M. What does it actually publish? C temp I Okay. So there is a pre compiled views in there. So if I were to do a dot that uh, Run C M I app. Unrecognized argument format. Okay. Startup dot C. I would have expected that to run. Can we agree on that? So startup.cs, line 27, what's happening there? I read that wrong, sorry. So that was build web host calls into configuration builder, configuration root, command line. But you're right about it seeming to be mm. eight minutes left. This hasn't been a successful evening. I'm a little bit confused. Yeah, I don't know. 
I've got nothing else to suggest at this point, um, but I'm going to call it a night. It's been a little bit frustrating. Um, this was meant to be the easy part. Um, what Where I was hoping to go with this was to start modifying the out-of-the-box uh, photo gallery application that came from the template that I found to then be able to start uh, adding in content or um, here's the um, castles that we as a family have visited with selfies and other such such things. Uh, I, I've also envisioned creating a um, Google Maps uh, widget with uh, markers to indicate where we've been. When you click on a marker, it takes you to the gallery, that sort of thing. So it, I'm not trying to reinvent Facebook or anything at this point. I just wanted a really simple photo gallery. Uh, and my thought was that with the ability to um, log in and administer it on, on the site as well. But my thought process was that I should get the infrastructure set up so the pipeline the builds the deployments all that working so that as i was making changes we could see those changes in real time uh, that's obviously not working at all so <laughs> um, i'm gonna leave it at that for this evening uh, where we got to tonight in terms of a recap wasn't very far uh, we got a repository up and running with the latest code uh, from the template uh, we attempted to hook that up to uh, Azure DevOps. That failed miserably because of requirements for uh, parallelism of builds uh, that needs to be requested. So I need to go back and delete those from the uh, uh, Azure DevOps instance that I created. Then we switched to using GitHub Actions. That seemed to be getting better. Uh, but we've got a deployment happening. So now on commit into our GitHub repository, it is building and deploying stuff to the app service that we created. Uh, but currently we are getting, um, currently we're getting a five, an HTTP 500 error when trying to access the site. So something's not quite right uh, we attempted to hook up azure uh, application insights that didn't seem to do anything uh, but that, well, it's entirely possible that um i haven't configured that correctly um oh we're getting uh we're getting numbers now where we weren't before Does that mean we're getting something in here let's just Run this exceptions again. No, still nothing. So we're not getting what I would have. Oh, hold on. Live streams. It's there's something in here that wasn't in there before. No. So it could be that there's page views then. Okay. So there's Failed requests. So something's not quite right. Um, exceptions causing request failures. No. Okay. Um, still not hooked up properly. I'll need to speak to Matthias potentially uh, about what I'm trying to achieve here to see if it uh, works as intended. Uh, but for now, thanks for hanging out. Um, a little bit of a frustrating evening, but hopefully it was useful to some folks. Uh, if not, I might be here next week trying to finish this off. Uh, take care, and we'll talk to you on the internet. Bye-bye.